What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the show. So today we're going to take a look and a listen to Representative Larson. He's going to be talking about the Social Security 2100 Act. This is part two. So I played part one. If you didn't catch part one, at the end of this video, you'll see a little link. You can click on that link. It will take you over to watch the first part of this. But I want to continue with the, He's talking about Social Security. So I want to continue and show you of the rest of this interview that he had with Laura Coates. So that's what we're going to focus on in this video. But first off, you guys can do me a favor. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell notification, and then click all. By clicking all, you'll get notified anytime we post a video. We do daily videos here. So by clicking the bell notification and clicking all, you should be getting updated every day. And just a reminder, thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. And if you'd like to follow me on Twitter and threads, you can at the TEC Show Live. Okay, so let's get right over to the second half of this interview with Representative Larson. Here we go. It is, it is particularly important, and it's pres- especially given the discussions about spending and our national debt and, um, and what it says on the world stage and beyond, but it also, when you look at what the pay-fors would be and, um, and what the benefits are, I mean, Social Security 2100, I know you can look on your website as well for people to see and get more information. It's also ensuring millionaires and billionaires pay their fair share by applying FICA to earnings above $400,000 with those extra earnings counted towards benefits at a reduced rate. We often hear about the very wealthy paying their fair share as it relates to taxation. How about this issue as well? Yeah, well, I think that that's critical. And again, kudos to President Biden here. I think that both in his his State of the Union message and in his budget request, he outlines that proposal. And it should also be noted on two fronts here that, number one, Social Security doesn't contribute a single penny to the national debt. It's an earned benefit paid for by the people that has its own trust fund. However, as you pointed out, and as President Biden, you know, their Social Security is capped. Each year that cap grows. But people over 400,000 millionaires stop paying into the program in February. Uh, a person like Bill Gates, you know, stopped paying in on January 2nd. Uh, and there are many millionaires and billionaires who don't pay anything at all because they're able to circumvent the law, the current law, uh, because of a loophole in the FICA provisions. So we close that loophole and we say people should pay their, fair, you know, why shouldn't a billionaire pay what a guy making 50, uh, 75, $100,000 is making during the year? That's, that's the right thing to do for a national program. We're all on the same team. We're all Americans. Let's join together. No one is going to be overburdened by paying what every American has to pay. And as I indicated, it doesn't create a single penny of debt. Social Security pays for itself. And as we indicated before, too, and I think this is an important point, Laura, is that for 40% of all Americans, considering that there are 70 million approximately Americans on Social Security, that's 28 million Americans. That's the only thing they have. And for women, For so many women, about 5 million Americans get below poverty level checks from Social Security because Congress has not done its job and made that adjustment. And most of them are women. Why? I think anyone can logically figure that out because they are care providers and gave birth and were at home with children. And also uh, because they were paid less over a period of time. So... Part of what Social Security 2100 does is create a new floor for Social Security so that no one that works all their lives and pays into the system can get a below poverty level check from its government while billionaires and millionaires are paying nothing into the system. Uh, I think that's a pretty fair thing to do. And I think most Americans, when they learn about the program, they go, yeah, that makes sense. Frankly, in polling data, most people even say, geez, if you charge me more because I know what these benefits are, I'm willing to pay that as well. But I think we have to make sure that people who haven't paid pay their fair share. And we're able to both extend the solvency of the program 
and also enhance benefits across the board. Well, speaking of polling, I want to go to the polls just for a moment, because as you know, the the ticket seems to be set with the, with both Biden and Trump earning the requisite number of delegates to secure their own nomination, short of the confetti falling from the sky at the respective conventions. But there are other races happening all across this country, including the down ballot, including things like in Ohio, the Republican Senate primary today, which is going to be the year's first test of Donald Trump's clout in a pretty contested Senate race. When you look at um, the races besides the presidency, are you optimistic that Democrats can um, reclaim a majority in the House and retain one in the Senate? Yes, and I'm especially optimistic uh, when we focus on the issues that are most relevant. I think uh, Mr. Krugman of the New York Times wrote an excellent article just uh, last week talking about Social Security and why it's so vitally important and why it needs to be funded and the fact that Biden and the Democrats have a plan. Republicans have nothing. I think that will resonate. Rachel Maddow also on her show talking about women's reproductive rights and Social Security. Those two issues go hand in glove together as we go forward through this process. And they're the real kitchen table discussions that ultimately get people to the polls because their votes in their own interests. Okay, so that was Representative Larson talking about the Social Security 2100 Act. Now, you notice he said that President Biden outlined the the kind of the the framework of the Social Security 2100 Act. However, President Biden hasn't indicated he hasn't said, I support the Social Security 2100 Act. Let's move this legislation forward. That's what I want to hear from him. I want to hear him endorse a reform for Social Security so we can move forward and actually bring this to the floor, actually bring it to a vote. And they can bring it to a vote in the Senate. They can do that because you have Schumer, the leader of the Senate. He can bring it to a vote and they can see where they're at. Now, it might not pass, but you will at least know where these lawmakers are when it comes to Social Security 2100 or a plan that's very similar to that. I think Senator Whitehouse has a plan very similar to the Social Security 2100 Act. So vote on it in the Senate. Because we know right now what's going on in the House. There's, there's still chaos. We might see another speaker get ousted. Speaker Johnson might get ousted. And so they're going to have to vote on a new speaker. And so there's just so much chaos in the House right now. They're not going to be able to vote on any legislation, especially legislation as serious as the Social Security 2100 Act. But if they bring it to the floor in the Senate and they actually vote on a bill that's similar to the Social Security 2100 Act, that would be good. We'll know where they are. When it comes to that, now they'll need 60 votes in the Senate. So you're going to need, it's going to need to be bipartisan. You're going to need to have Democrats, all Democrats support it, and then have at least 10 or at least nine Republicans actually vote for it in order for it to pass in the Senate. But if it doesn't pass in the Senate, right before an election, we're going to know what senators are in favor of reforming Social Security and providing an expansion to Social Security, which I think is very important. And we'll know who, what senators are against it. And that's also important. And so that's just my two cents. We'll have to see what Congress does and see if they even move forward with any type of legislation. But I'm telling you, if they don't do it this year, most likely we're going to see it very soon because they have to address this because you only have nine years before the trust fund runs out of money. So if they don't address it sooner, if they wait later, it's going to be even worse when it comes to how they solve this problem. So I want to know what you guys think, so let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.